What's up guys, Quirrell here. This time I show you guys Yuga 1 uh, story chapter runs. There's a few things that we need to know for new player. Or uh, mostly I will talk about what item to use. I will even make a spreadsheet about what item to use when we are running in the story chapter. That's after I play for three four days on Yuga One. There's certain part we lack of damage. So when we start to lack of damage, you have to try and change your uh, talent tree, your skilling. And for me, when I run story chapter, I like to use the sacrifice blade and then link it with uh, and use the spear strike so that it's a better a better movement and dodge skill from bosses that's what I mostly use for yuga but when I reach the natal round map I will change to uh, a warm using warm or staff depend on what item we get mostly is depend on the the tier level for the additional damage to frozen enemy it's best that you can get like a t3 or t2 additional damage to frozen enemy so the whole run will be a bit long like 38 minutes but this is only a story chapter and then plus running the net around from time up yeah i think it's time up one to time up three there's still a bit more i haven't add, add in yet maybe this time around i just uh make the first part for uh, yuga one story chapter run and then to the starting area not starting then to the time up one to three for the net round run like at the early stage of the game our damage is not really that high and i use mostly use ice lens until time mark 8 2 because ice lens is a range and we can hit it uh, far away from the enemy because if we get to time mark 8 there's a go golden galilator it will kill us very fast if we are, depend on what type is it but most of them is uh, very hard to kill them And this part is uh when we already at the end of stop uh story chapter one I'm level twenty two. I mostly just pick up like, if you are lucky. It really depend whether what type of legendary item you get, and if you can get the grace boots. Grace boot help us to gain a uh, focus blessing. So for this part, we are at the Plaza of Gori. Here we can do a fast travel, just TP back. Don't need to run anymore after you talk to the NPC and you get to the hideout. And then like we can basically use tip. Uh, there's a few area on the chapters in chapter two and three that we can skip by like, don't need to waste time running you can just use the TP and then we can uh, travel much faster and th that is for this part when we reach level 25 for the hunter forge 
it's really depend on how strong your character is if you can't kill it at level 25 then go level out even more and then try your best to kill it and try to dodge all those aoe from the bosses that's why i use sacrifice blade we can use the spirit strike just to move around for me it's because uh, this build i got lucky i can get those uh, legendary gear that increase my uh, damage and i also have a good finding of a uh, weapon for the glove is uh, i like to get attack speed on the glove so that it increase my spear strike another one is getting life regen like the whole chapter run is just get life regen for survive and damage is the added damage for the glove i just like to get attack speed for spear strike and this is another boss on the awakened shrine area these three bosses some player also will die neither to this boss or to the next boss is the Thai master the keegan so here i just use the on ownerless and then i run it to the next area For this part, some player they like what the enraged beast is a bit hard to kill. Like just dot all those laser beam and those projectile. Like if you saw the white stone, when the boss use the laser beam or the breath, the white stone will become a projectile that shoot out. And then when they run away with low life, we have to find the NPC and stand inside the shield. And for the Keegan fight, after how many? 25%, he will go in vulnerable phase. And then you have to wait for him to cast this and then dodge the projectile. Like he will shoot all the white stone and will become a projectile. And then try to uh, stay away from the AoE. Like this projectile that is on the four corner, they are damaged over time. So try not to stand on it. And then dodge whenever you see his hand uh, go up you'll know that he's going to shoot something and just keep running he is a easy fight depend if whether you have enough damage for this time round my ss uh, solo so far i have a good finding of item so it's uh, a bit easy for me to clear it but there's a few player they stuck on this boss yeah, and another one is also depend on what hero you play some hero is better some hero sucks in the story chapter so you will waste a lot of time killing boss and retry killing bosses and this one is a uh, level 45 is the talent point and then just will be killing for the or this uh, sorry this for level 45 heal trial <clears throat> 25 then 45 and then 60 this for the 45 heal trial after we get we get the level 45 heal trial <clears throat> we can summon the uh, yuga will auto cast the space time illusion so we don't need to cast space time illusion anymore and on this part <clears throat> sorry we go bottom with the kill the enemy <coughs> sorry <laughs> always try to look for equipment that is used for your build and what which which weapon that you want to main and then just look at one weapon type so for this area is we go touch the shield and then touch the weapon the sword they will spawn double pack of enemy if you touch the sword and then uh, you only spawn one pack of enemy so this one is just be careful it's uh, a bit easy to die if you stand right in the middle so you have to dodge around and this part you can basically kill a lot of pack of enemy to get more 
experience but because in SS4 they introduce an area that is called treasure room you can go to that area to farm your experience if you need it sometimes if you can't kill the boss or whatever try to get more level and hope that you get more uh, weapon drop that you can use for your build So the next area, the Plaza of Eternity, that's also we can uh, TP to the quest area, like you talk to the path for champion first, then run down the stairs. Uh, around here, you, you can start to uh, teleport to the bottom one, so that you don't need to waste time to run. And this area, uh, do the quest, try to follow the quest uh, marker. And this area, when you kill the uh, boss map, you have to run out of the room. We can't use uh, teleport anymore. So we have to run out of the room to start the cutscene. Then we can teleport to the next area. Like this part, there will be a cutscene. Like skip the cutscene and then you open out your map. Take TP to the top. And then also follow the quest marker. This area is a bit buggy. The sometimes the quest marker will not show. If you are not close, the, the the quest marker will not update if you are not close to it. So try to uh get close to it, and then like this part is really end of the quest, and then you go back to the plaza of eternity, and then talk to the NPC. I always uh, when there's a hunter forge to do I always go in and kill it but if you are lack of damage you really can wait until for example 25 45 60 75 and 90 so when you like this you can save all the talent point and wait until uh, 45 60 75 then you go clear them because that time you're already much stronger Plus, uh, Ring of Sun. So this area, after you talk to the NPC, run to four corner. Four corner have four chests. Take the chest. There's a chance you get the some legendary gear that is needed for your build. But most most of the time they come out is uh, item that is not really useful. Like Royal Guard boot is not really useful. Six foresight is still fine, but it really depends. The those legendary gear that is for very early stage they drop. So just remember to open the chest before the flame lava, uh, destroy the treasure chest, and that's basically for this part. Until you kill the enemy, I will speed up this part. To the defined tone area, there will be a treasure uh, room that we can go in. This map, the hall of uh, grand grand something. This area I like to farm to level sixty or fifty eight. Then I go kill the dragon, the last dragon boss of the story chapter, so that I have more damage, like increase, uh, get more skill talent before I go kill the last boss. So this area you just can like just keep running and kill the the map boss because this part you can even level up to level 75 before you go to the Neptune round time mark 1 to 3 you'll find that you are much stronger if you are level 75 but after level 75 without XP balance 
pack period, you will find that your you 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 can't get one hundred percent SP gain from the map. I think around level seventy or sixty five, you will find that your experience start to get lesser and lesser. But if you want, you can level up to level seventy or level seventy five on this map. Just keep running and kill the boss. You can also use this area to farm some of the legendary gear. For example, you need the Serenjin Inspiration prototype. This part will drop. Photophobia will drop also. Like I, for me, I got it here. And then the Omi Size prototype. Right there, there's a lot of legendary gear that is good for the build. Just remember, take some time and then farm the boss. It help. And then always look at the crafting gear and then I will speed up the next part until we kill the dragon there the rusted sun is because this i record this is really like the second month of the lead start on the first week of lead start this boss is take me like half an hour to kill it because his hp is too high and his damage too too high also but right now is like he's much more easy when you have enough damage or you can like get even more uh, level my right now my character level is 58 some people they can kill it in around 50 it really depends but i just like to get more experience and then to kill him so that i don't need to keep running the uh, boss fight over and over again we kill the boss right we will start to get energy uh, from the uh, equipment you can look at the equipment they start to drop energy for us so look for high energy or uh, like both things look for high energy equipment and look for more effects that you can use with high energy because the high energy you have, we have the more skill link we can use. So that is also very important when you are running, just, uh, when you want to start to run the story chapter. Neither you can run in like level 58 or 60 or you can go back to the treasure room there to keep leveling up. That's what I, I'm doing for this part. Because some player, if they play the hardcore solo so far, it's like the experience is so much important because you have more survive. And then like for me, at this part, I go back to chapter 3 and then keep running this room, just reset the stage. And then keep running, killing the enemy. Neither you can start the nether round at level 65, 70. 75 will be a bit because uh, if you want to run until level 75 the amount of experience gain will be a bit low so it's around 65 or 70 you can go back to the next round and start to run chapter uh, time up one to uh, three or seven depend on how fast you can run it and how lucky you can find all those items that is for the build like now i'm still using the sacrifice blade after that i will change to warm or staff that have the frozen damage additional damage to frozen enemy yeah so this part i also will like speed up
there's a a bug like if you select the level 75 field trial the bottom one and then you cast 15 time and then after you cast 15 time you change back to the top level 75 the top hero trial you can get both buff from the hero trial like the top and the bottom hero trial you can get two of it like this trick is like it's really depend if you want to do that or not but uh, i don't really do it but sometimes if it need extra damage you can try to do it when you reset the map the buff will be gone because this is a known bug and this video i will share until i'm level 75 and this is the damage that i have for level 75 is only like what uh 15 million but as your level and better item that you get you are getting more and more da damage mostly it's like uh like test around the damage now it's like 23 or 24 and this is the trick that I, I show again like cast 15 time on the bottom level 75 hero trial after 15 time then you change back to the top one so when you start the journey dummy fight you will get two hero trial buff as you can see the damage is a bit higher but it's not higher that by a lot but uh, it helps when you are like at the early stage end game you can even get even more damage if you do this trick but uh, you have to waste your time to, to cast it it really depends <laughs> so for the yuga one i'm using iceland now it's already level 93 so for those items that i'm found when i'm leveling this is the legendary gear I found this vivid color because here have a spell burst so I use it then after that I found this in the treasure trove or for me I call it treasure room you can use it at level 20 so when when we are leveling it's best that the, we go to the treasure room here to farm for the omi sign prototype and then uh, like uh grace books grace book help a lot and then the photophobia another one the lonesome so after that is like the chapter two chapter two is i think it's around chapter three chapter two chapter three there's a chance that you will drop the surging inspiration prototype and then the jumbo ice prototype it really depend i got the surging inspiration prototype but i never got the jumbo ice prototype but if you got it you can use it so like uh this chain of resistance also can be used but mostly i use onless because it have a uh, movement speed so i will change this that's uh yeah I, i'm still using the photophobia because it have a uh, binken so and then when i'm leveling i like to use like i say in the front i like to use a uh, sacrifice blade so sacrifice blade additional damage against frozen enemy and these uh, more effects have to wait until we can use arcanis from frost beaten and then for the binken because we already have it so we use winter but if we ha if we haven't get the false beaten yet uh just use the chewy this one when we have the false beaten then we use winter so for the second core talent is using prepare and so goddess of knowledge and then the second one is magister after you get the magister uh that is around because magister here have more cast speed more damage and then later after that we have to change this to arcanis 
So at first it's Magister, then later we change it to Arcanist. Arcanist, we need to get the Force Beaten. Because the at the early stage we get we get our first core talent is the Goddess of Knowledge, and then the second one is Magister. When we unlock the third one, so we have to respect. When we unlock the third one, we will, we will respect it. Our second for Magister will reselect into Arcanis, and then the Magister will be on the third one. After that, uh, after you respect, try to get Force Beaten. After you get the Force Beaten, then you change. Depend if you have the Binken, the Photophobia Amulet. If you have it, then you will change from Chili to Winter because it gives us more damage from Force uh, by Enemy. And then the another one is the Extreme Corners. So I will make a max roll guide on the skilling. Uh, here I can show you also. But this one is uh, more in already in Nathan round. Right now the progression is still at 7, seven one. I still doesn't have much time to level up on here. Like uh is it really I really reached 72. Is it 72? Yeah. I really reached 72. But not every map. Oh never mind. It's really every map. It's like sometimes I don't remember how far I run. So right now I have no issue with running 72. So back to the core talent. So after we got uh, Arcanis Extreme Corners, here we at the early stage we go for core damage. After that we will change to max mana at the back. That is around time mark 8. Two. Around time mark 8 2, we will change, we will respect again. That's why at level 80 is the last chance to respect. But you have to farm a lot of obliteration point, or neither you go buy it. Because my I I tried this build in SS uh in solo so far. So I don't have uh, those resource to get. And all this, you will, you will respect again. So the early stage, I recommend use Ice Lens. After that, you can change to Thunderbolt Overload. End game is the Hunting Abomination. And this route is like uh, spell damage because at the back we have to change to max mana. But early stage we can't go for max mana. You lack of too much damage if you go for max mana. Because uh, if we go for max mana, we have to get a lot of crafting gear at the early stage uh, around the start of the net round. It's so hard to get crafting. So the best is to get set legendary gear. Two, two set give up plus two spell skill level. Four set increase our resistance. So it's like the best is getting four set it increase our resistance. Just that when you fun for this, like try to get it to 80. Like amulet, if you got the amulet, then your core talent have to change to Pinken. This anyone that is high roll, I will get it or high energy, I will just use it. Most uh, most important one is high energy, and then for the belt amulet. Uh, and the ring, whichever is a high roll, just use them. For ring, I mostly go for resistance. Uh, these two ring, I get resistance first, and then I got the the force set. So that's why my resistance now is a bit more, but it doesn't matter. And for weapon, it's best to get the T two additional damage against frozen en enemy. This increase a lot of damage, and then we have to go for like spell damage added core damage or as long as it's added a uh, amount of damage to the spell is good and for the glove I go for frostbite inflated 
here you like it's, it's all depend what you can get it's re really uh depend i have a lot of uh item that i found before i change to this road bike i was using the resistance one. but because my resistance is already max so i change i remove the resistance one and then get this so when you are leveling the skilling is really depend because this energy shield uh, so I, I talk from the top to the bottom this is the filing that I use for Iceland's and then uh, secret origin use secret origin when you can gain focus blessing mostly is I uh, increase the extension the duration of the skill and then mass effect and freak domain to have a fast run mana well we sacrifice we don't need to care about the duration because we most of the time we just press it one time and then we start the map run element disruption for curse summon thunder spirit i link with the sacrifice this take effect boost up our cast speed and then superpower also boosts up our cast speed and then protection fuel for survive this uh, i just like to use the summoner thunder linked up with protection fuel so for the leveling just use freak domain and then get concentrated so for ss4 season concentrated it only affect the aura that is affected to the player freak domain is not an aura effect on player it affect the enemy so it's counted as a debuffing enemy rather than added to the character so here we can get one more aura and that will be energy fortress to increase our survive it really depends on how much mana you can get if i have more mana i can like get the stand as one but this will reduce too much so I just use the aura and then uh, selfless selfless increase our because this minus additional aura effect is minus the character aura effect for free domain so this doesn't affect the character this effect the enemy so we get 49.8% aura effect on the enemy so it will boost this damage out and then uh free domain i use the seal convention for the aura we start to use them around level 50 or 55 and then another one is a mask is getting ice in but it increase our farming speed because this explosion is 100 percent compared to the chest crafting chest explosion they have a 10 or 20 percent to kill the to explode the enemy but ice in but is always explode the enemy this is 100 percent like if you have curse you can link it to grudge or increase the area now i already run out of energy because i changed my glove like i have a few like all these neither you get different resistance mostly i look for the freeze duration so it's like even the shoe I go for the higher row. This is level 80. But the chest, I didn't get a good one. And the goggle also the same. So I pick up a lot of item. Just to show you guys. Add lightning damage to gear. But mostly it's best is add damage to spell. And then spell damage per mana currently own. Crit, right, uh, crit rate but this is not better than what I have because here I have a T1 spell damage and 2 added damage so this is around time mark 1 to time mark uh, 6 what equipment to get if we are using spell burst you also can get additional damage for skill cast by spell burst but my aim is getting additional damage against frozen enemy so for this build is when the enemy is frozen we deal high damage so we need to have a high freeze duration like it is freeze 
it will do a lot of damage. After the freeze end, the damage will drop. So all this is really depend what you can get. Like mostly fun for at least four set legendary gear. And then the photophobia depend whether you get the set legendary amulet or the can use the photophobia. And I think I think that's it. The for the early stage that getting on the time mark one to time mark seven. And I and for the patch period, I'm not using any legendary pack I have, but I'm not using it. So, because I want to show a player that without using the legendary patch period, we don't run out of, we have enough damage to get to time up seven or even time up eight. Time up eight maybe will be lack of damage, but uh, I will wait and see. I have to test around it. I think that basically, uh, if you find that this guy is useful, give me some like and subscribe my channel. Thank you guys for watching. See ya. Bye bye.